gave us a picture of the reaction of Joseph when he was being sold into slavery. Please put this up for me. When Joseph was being sold into slavery in Genesis chapter 42 Verse 21. They said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother. For we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not err. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. So when Joseph was being sold, Joseph was not laughing. When Joseph was being sold, Joseph did everything within his power to stop that event from happening. He employed pleading. I can imagine Joseph talking to his brother saying things like, I will never report you again. He employed tears. And there were many reasons why he did that. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 to 19. We're looking at Joseph tears. Someone say Joseph tears when you finally realize there was no need to cry there is a level of understanding that comes to you that what you used to weep about becomes what you now laugh about hallelujah genesis 15 verse 15 when joseph's brother saw that their father was dead they said perhaps joseph will hate us and he may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him so they sent messengers to Joseph saying, Before your father died, he commanded saying, Thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then Joseph his brothers also went and fell down before his face and they said behold we are your servants in verse 19 joseph said to them do not be afraid for am i in the place of god joseph is weeping in genesis 50 at this time his prime minister at this time he has started sustaining his brethren brought them to egypt i hope you know he was not weeping for the same reason he was weeping as recorded in genesis 42 why was he weeping in Genesis 42? He was weeping for the fear of the unknown. He was being sold to Ishmaelites who had taken him to Egypt. He was pleading for his life. He was weeping for uncertainties. And he was weeping because the unexpected happened to him. When he left the father's house that day, his mission was to go see where his brothers are. And his greatest understanding was that he was returning home. But something happened to him that was taking him to an unexpected direction. He was going to face uncertainty and it brought him tears. And all of us here, when we face uncertainties, when life seems to hang by the thread, our emotions run riot. It looks like things are not going to work. When we face fear, tears, is our response to unexpected solution, situations and when life is taking its toll on us. So much that if you are not careful, even tears look like a curse. How many of you, if I say you will have tears, you will rejoice? Is that no? Is that pastor qualified? 
call it the tears of joy. Psalm 116 verse 8. Psalm 116 verse 8. David said, you have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. So that means tears does not connote something good. If you are delivered from it, David said, you have delivered my eyes from tears. In the name of Jesus, you will not cry this year. I thought you would say a better amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Jeremiah was speaking about how he observed Israel and their challenges. He said, my head is full of water. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. My, oh, that my head are waters. My eyes are fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. It's, uh, it is one part of us that we use most time when something that is very grievous happens to us. Jeremiah said, when I look at my, the daughters of my people, tears just continually well from me. My head looks like a fountain that keeps producing water without season. In Lamentations chapter 2 verse 11, this same Jeremiah, Lamentations chapter 2 verse 11, he said, my eyes fail with tears. My heart is troubled. My bile is poured on the ground because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. Because the children and the infants faint in the streets of the city. Psalm 42 verse 3 and 4. Psalm 42 verse 3 and 4. The psalmist said, my tears have become my food. My tears have been my food day and night. Why they continually say to me, where is my God? It's the only way we comfort ourselves. When we face uncertainty and things we can't control. The tears will not change it. But we still let it flow. Isn't it? Because somehow it's the only way that we can just pull ourselves together. So much more that one of the promises of the scripture that is at the climax of the age in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus, God will wipe away all tears. If there's any place you have cried, God will wipe away your tears in the name of Jesus Christ. Down the years after, in Genesis 45, verse 1 to 3, Joseph cried another cry. His brothers have been coming to Egypt. He's been portraying himself to be a different person to them. And the Bible said, when Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, he cried out, make everyone go from me. So no one stood with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept aloud. Joseph is saying, what do you call people that always weep? Everywhere you see Joseph is weeping. Eh? Cry baby Abby. Okay. He wept aloud and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh had it. Joseph weeps very big weeping. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. I want to ask a question. These tears described in Genesis 45, is it the same as the tears described in Genesis 42? For we saw the anguish of his soul when we sold him. How he was pleading. But now he's weeping. Why is he weeping again? This one has emotions. It's overwhelming. It's the tears of reunion. And one tear that is coming out of his eyes is the tear of the ignorance of his people. His people don't know God has gone ahead of them. His people were masters when they saw themselves as people who are needy. God has sent a man ahead of them. Do you know many a times you look like God does not have any care for you. God does not have any concern for you. When he has actually raised men for you. Are you following me? There, there were not just all the nations who are looking for sustenance. God has sent a man ahead of them. And the way they were crying and the way they were, they were, they, they were, they were begging just because of his silver cup. He was weeping. You don't even know what has been prepared for you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. 
Amos chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. I, ju- I can just imagine in that Genesis 45. Joseph, when, they, when he remembered the cry, he was crying when they sold him. He would discover really, really, that cry was just not needed. Do you know why he was crying? If he, was, if he knew that that was going to be the pathway to his exaltation. If he ever knew that that was going to be the pathway to the preservation of the people who are selling him. The question is, will he cry? God's plan does not always appear as though it's God's plan. And sometimes it looks like the enemy has gotten an advantage. It looks like the enemy is in control. And that generates our weeping. But in Genesis 45, when he was looking back to comprehend the reason why he had gone through everything he went through, he was not weeping for the same reasons he was weeping when he was being sold. Are you following me, church? There is a point you get to in your life that what you are weeping about, you are going to look at it and say, ah, it really had no business even weeping about that thing. You know, there's a way you go through situations and you pass through those situations and you come out of there and you cannot even reconnect back to how you felt when you were in the midst of that pain. All of us have gone through things we wept about and later discovered that it had no basis. But at the point of incidents, it will look like the, the world came down crashing. Glory to God. Amos 6 from verse 1. Woe to you who at ease in Zion and trust in Mount Samaria. Notable persons in the chief mountain to whom the house of Israel comes. Go to Carmel, see. From there go to Ahmad the Great. Go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms or is their territory greater than your territory? Woe to you who put far the day of doom. Who caused the seat of violence to come near? Who lie on the beds of ivory? Who stretch out on your couches and heat lamps from the floor and carve from the midst of the store? Who sing idly to the sound of string instruments and invent for yourself musical instruments like David without the spirit of David? Who drink wine from the bowls and anoint yourself with the best ointment? But they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Therefore, they shall go down captive as the first of the captives, and they and those who recline at banquets shall be removed. They were not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. In Psalm 105, verse 16 to 24, the Bible said the Lord called for a famine. And when the Lord was calling for a famine, he had already prepared a way of escape. And the way of escape is that he sent a man ahead of them. Who was sold? He sent a man who was sold. So the sending was camouflaged in the selling as slaves. And so they could Joseph could not make a connect with the fact that God is sending him. If I come out this morning to tell you God is sending you and has an assignment for you, there's a level of emotion and excitement and hope that he generates in you. But God did not come to Joseph to tell him, I'm sending you. God just sold him. You see, that was why he pleaded. Because he didn't see it as a sending. You didn't get what I'm saying. He pleaded. He wanted to go back home. Home. He, want, he, he so much loved the coat of many colors. He was a life was comfortable with already. Ah, are you telling me that my father will not hug me? And God was looking at from heaven. Not needed anymore. Breaking your emotions, but not needed anymore. You see, sometimes when God is doing that which you need, it, the chastisement does not seem pleasant at the moment. That is the truth of the matter. When God was, see, that day, there were at least two people that were ready to keep Joseph back where he started from or three people there was only one person that was not ready and it was god how did i know 
Number one, Joseph was ready to go back home. He pleaded. He, he said, How are you? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just 16. God said, you are mature. Some of you say, Lord, why am I having big problem at my age? God said, because you can't go back to where you used to be. I called you to solve big things. Who is that person God called to solve big things? I'm not, you're not going to dwell in the fairy fairy house of life. Joseph pleaded. There was one person that pleaded too that didn't want Joseph to go. They called his name Reuben. You know Reuben? Reuben said, don't kill him. Why should we kill our brother? Throw him into a pit. And what was his plan? He was not concerned about Joseph. He was concerned about their father. Because he knew that the father's soul had been attached to Joseph. So he said, I will take him back to the father. The burden of Reuben is the father. The burden of Joseph is Joseph. But the burden of God is Israel. So God got to a point. Every other thing people presented to God, God said, invalid. God is not an emotional God. God is a God of plans. And sometimes when you are crying, when you, are, you, say, you can't go home again. You can't go. There are things that are over and they are over. You can't go back again. There are bridges that are born. And stop crying about it. You can't go back again. Is that about, Daddy, I, I, I didn't say bye-bye to my father when I was going. Jesus said, you know, when Jesus wants to initiate you into destiny, there's a way he calls you out that it's so, it's so intense. One day some people said, we want to follow you, Jesus. And he said, and they said but let's go. Let, let, just give us the last honor of going to hug our parents. And Jesus said, anybody that puts his hand on the plan and look black, it's not fitting. That's how serious your destiny is to God. Sometimes it will require you not even going back to say bye-bye to some people. You just move because that season is over. I I'm telling you the truth. You just move because God... You know, some of you just have to make a divorce with certain past that you have gone through. And there is no... Because, forget that man. God. Hey, see, he just bought a car in 2022. Lord, and you are looking... God said, take your eyes away from that. It's over. I have said to that one, you have nothing to do with that one. You have all to do with what I am bringing before you. Are you with me? He sent a man. And when he sent the man ahead of them, the Bible said they put the man, they sold him as a slave, they put his feet in chains. The chains that hurt him. Psalm 105, who is there? From verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They ought his feet with feathers. Truthfully, can I tell you the truth? Joseph was hot. Some things that you need will hurt you. Somebody said something that really struck me. He who God is going to use greatly it will force hurt deeply. Because many a times, you can't bring out what is inside of you until you have made certain connections with some levels of pain. I'm telling you the truth. Every high priest is chosen from among men, not because of strength, but so that he can bear with their infirmity since he himself has gone through infirmities. What prepared you to connect with what you are doing? Some of us don't understand the power of waiting. Some of us don't understand the power of, of being rejected. Joseph was hot. Joseph was not laughing. Joseph was angry. And sometimes Joseph felt he was underplayed by God. And sometimes Joseph felt he was triumphing over good. And he pleaded for it not to happen. How many of you remember that apostle that saw a thorn in his flesh? He said, and for three times I pleaded to God. When we see what we don't like, we plead, we cry from the anguish of our soul. Can you just take it away from me? But God's answer was, my grace 
God did not answer the apostle according to what the apostle thought he would need as an answer. God said to him, my grace is sufficient. Paul now said, when I went through that, I now understood again that it is when I am weak, that's when I'm strong. So I, I took a permanent address in weakness so that the power of God can rest upon me. People want to be powerful without being weak. People want to be they want, they want to be emotional. They want to be caring without being wounded. They want to be a nurse without knowing what it means to be injected. You have never gone through it. So you think everybody that is shouting is just being stupid. It's one minute now. Until you go through it and... Uh, so this is what you people, this is what you people go through. The earth is fit with feathers. It was laid in high on. Until the time that is what came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Hallelujah. I said the word of the Lord tested him. The word of the Lord tested him. What did he do? Verse 20, the ruler sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. Verse 21. He made him lord of his house, the ruler of his possessions, to bind his princes at pleasure, to teach his elders wisdom. Israel came into Egypt. This is where God was going. God was sending him ahead to bring the nation into the land. And so when he got to this place, he turned back and looked at his cry and he said, I was just wasting my time. There was no need to cry. I was on the mission of preservation. When God makes you learn some lessons very early, it's because God is preserving you from, from deep pains later. Some people are still lying to themselves. Life is a smooth ride. Nothing, evil, nothing will happen. And everything I want will come. They will soon discover that everything you need in the purpose of God will come. But not everything you want for your own pleasure will come. I might, are we together? Are we here? Hallelujah. In Psalm 119 verse 71, the writer of that psalm said a very strange statement. He said, it was good, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. It is good for me. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The reason why most of you don't know God and don't know the word, and you don't know the spirit of God, you don't know the comforter, is because you've not gone through some deep pains. There are some deep pains you go through in life. You have no person to talk to. There is no friend that can understand. There is no pastor that can understand. You will be forced to talk to that God who you don't see. You will be, told, you will, you will be, you will be forced to seek an audience with God. Who is the only person that will say, it is well. And when he says, it is well, it means a whole lot to you. It is good that I've been afflicted that I may learn your statutes. Hey, don't waste your pain because they are the platforms of God's revelation to you. They are the platforms of God's revelation. You will know God in a very personal way. Not just in the church way. Not just because somebody says it's good. Are you following? Because you see, God is so... Many times when we are crying and we are angry, he will just wait. He can wait on you to weep all night to just tell you, I am with you. He can wait on you to fight all night like Jacob. You fight with him all night, then he wake up in the morning and touch your tire and discover he was not fighting you. Because if he was fighting you, you will not be here. But through the night, Joseph had the, Jacob had the perception that he was being fought by God. In the morning, he had the perception that he was being blessed. He didn't get it. Because in the night, he said, he fought him. Then in the morning, he said, you will not go until you bless me. That this, this is not an adversary against me. This is somebody sent to bless me. And sometimes what you think is an adversity against you is the platform of your blessing. Are we together? It is good for me. I need to tell you truth today. It is not all sorrow that you need to repent of. Hey, let it go away from me. I don't want to think. If they answered Joseph's prayer that day, 
And he went back home. Reuben, I owe you one. I owe you one. Ah! Maybe I would have been sleeping among pigs now. Ah! He would be so happy. But heaven would be sad. Because he would be part of people carrying sack looking for food. When the famine comes. When instead of him being the Lord of the famine. It is good that I have been afflicted. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 to 12. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 5 to 12. Paul said, For indeed when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but were troubled on every side. Outside were conflict, inside were fears. Nevertheless, God will comfort the dunkers, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Not only by his coming, but also by the consolation which he was comforted in you. When he told us your harness desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. This must be a very bad apostle. These apostles, they were describing the experience of a church. They said, that church mourned. They are crying. Paul said, when I had it, I was happy. There are some crying when I see, I should be happy. Because it is when you have deep thinking that you have those cry. When you don't understand life, you will just be jumping. You know, the, when, when, when your child fails an exam and he sits in one corner at all, very angry with himself, a part of you is angry, a part of you is happy because if he failed and you came back, met him playing ball, What will you do? Yeah. But if he's so angry, you is angry, well, 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 well. You didn't do well, but he said, well, you know, you know. But what happens? What matters most? It is that you need to double up your efforts, and that pain will make him double up his effort because he will never want to be back to that junction again. There are some mourning that if you see in people's life and you are a mentor to them, you rejoice because it means they are beginning to put value on certain things they've ignored before. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. So he said, For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it. This same way God did not regret not answering Joseph's prayer that day. Joseph said, God, you are not faithful. God said, "Mm -hmm. I do not regret it. If I talk, if I come to you, if I had to suspend you for you to be all daddy, I do not regret it. Because a child left to himself will cause shame. When you cause more shame, that will be my greatest pain. This pain now, my for now, seems temporary. It might look so bad, but that's what we do to children who you want to have. Children that are not bastards. That's what you do to them. When you are beating your child, something in you is pain, but at the same time you are happy because there is hope. Even if I made you sorrow with my letter, I do not regret it. This was, uh, I'm, not, I'm not an emotional person. Sometimes when you are angry, Pastor, you have done this to me. Pause. Congratulations. Next level of dealing, please. Pastor, you don't know where I came from. I came, I came out the way and you just gave me five minutes. And he and said, see me again tomorrow. I do not regret it. Though I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I perceived that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while one of the reasons why god was not moved with the anguish of joseph tears is because he knew that it was for a short time are you following me because at the end of god's plan he will wipe away all tears for your eyes so the tears joseph was going through at that time is for a short time i, I say it's for a short time the enemy is painting it to you that it's a permanent thing but i've come to tell you this morning is for a short time it's so short that in some couple of years time you will never be able to remember how it felt and how it looked are you following me now i was talking to somebody yesterday i said i had five girlfriends before i married it didn't make me anymore it was as people broke my heart five times but they wanted to turn it to tumblr and glasgow including the ones that had dates of engagement or date of introduction with 
There was one where I was particular. It took God to show me a vision to calm me. It was painful. But now, a, so when I was talking to her, she told me, well, Pastor, you're a man. I said, I'm a man, but I'm a human being. So some people started counting and he said, he said, oh, they don't share. The new world got come. Everybody, people always have a reason to point to something in your life. That's just the truth. People always have, because some people just are looking for some way to disapprove you. But thank God, God is looking for a way to approve you. Are you following me? And I was sorry. And some of those things, you know what you do when it happens. You say, I wish I did not make it public. I wish no other person knew. Because the greatest burden is not even what the incidents. The greatest burden is the perception of people. If you don't understand it, ask Mary, the, Joseph, the husband of Mary. He did not want to make her a public example. The greatest burden of Joseph was not just that Mary was pregnant. It's how do I put her off without creating a sin? Because if I tell them I don't know her, I'm not the one that impregnated that they will stone her because she had committed fornication or adultery some other people will not believe it so, right just there that was a particular day i saw her coming out of your house around 7 35 p.m the way two of you were going I, I, I just my mind was telling me something but i just i know i was just using christian mind you don't want to think bad. You just want to face, save yourself. So the burden, as much as being found with a child was a burden, how to handle it was a greater one. And the Bible said when he was thinking about to handle it, God had to appear to him. Hallelujah. And God started telling him, don't be afraid. Take her, take her. That's not, that's not something to sorrow about. That's something that will make your name resound from, eternity, from time to eternity. What you want to put away is what is going to give you a place in the purpose of God. Are you following me? I said, what you want to put away is what is going to give you a place. He said, oh God, can you just take me there? God said, I can't take you there without taking you through. Take you there without taking you through something. You must go through something, including what you don't like. Now it's my year of purposeful promotion. You can't value promotion if you have not been demoted or treated in the way you felt you don't even deserve. So the first, the first story before Joseph's promotion was a story of how he interpreted dreams and he was forgotten. To prepare him for the day when he will interpret dreams and he will be remembered. And he will know that it is not his gift, it is his God. Because you can have, you can do the same thing in other places and it will not be promoted. If it is, if it is vastness of understanding, if it is vastness of experience, most of us will not be where we are today. But God is saying, he said, I, make, I want you to do it even when nobody acknowledges it. So that when you do it and all the world acknowledges it, nobody will shout. You have go, we have both gone through the abounding and the abasing face of what God is doing with your life. Are you following me? And you have learned how to be true in season and out of season. And you have learned how to stay faithful to God in the night and in the day. You have learned how to stay faithful to God when you are forgotten, when you are remembered. Are you following me? And it was important to God. Now I rejoice. Not that you are made sorrowful. But the problem I have with this apostle is that if we rejoice when people are crying, there's a way we finish preaching. All these church members will go into very dangerous fasting. Lord, use me. And Paul will stay in one corner. It's working. It's okay. Some of them will be with Lord. They will confess all the sins that nobody remembered. You know, when people start coming out to confess, you know that revival is. I was in a meeting many years ago. It was somewhere in the Kitty State. I was preaching. And at the end of that sermon, the next session, People came out and said, we want to confess our sin. I've never seen it before. And one day they said, actually, I came here, I've aborted five times. And they were weeping. I had to stop the confession. It was getting tiring for me because I said, go and tell God. Go and tell God. I don't want to hear. I'm not. It was terrible. I was hearing terrible things from people. 
You know that was yes, I preach it, sir. When I was preaching in the morning, I was afraid. But inside of me, at the same time, somebody was telling me something is changing. Because whatsoever made people go hold up that they were wrong. Are you following me? Even though it's painful for them to acknowledge it, but the day they embrace it, I said, well, at that point, what I did was wrong. I didn't build the right way. You know that they're on the platform of true transformation. Because we are too hypocritical. We, many a times, even when we are wrong, we push it to the, it's, it's him. It's you. I'm looking for the day you will say, it's me. And though you will be crying for saying it's me, but I'll be rejoicing. I say, yes, we now have a platform for a new beginning. We have a platform. Sometimes the people, the people that rejected you, they reject you only because of themselves. But because you too had your own issues. You had your own attitude. Are you following me? And sometimes if, you are, if God gives you grace to say, it is me, then I rejoice. I rejoice. Not because you are happy, but because you are on the pathway. He said, I rejoice, not that you are made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. Joseph had some things to repent of. I just heard a dream. I just heard a dream. I just heard a dream. He think it's about competition. He didn't know it's about preservation. Everybody was guarded. Me too, I was guarded. And my own sheep stood. Because I said, year old boy. He's not getting it. I told you people, the day Joseph saw the dream come to pass and he saw his brothers bowing before him, he turned his face and started weeping. That's not it. How do you see your headless brother bowing before you to survive? It is an, unre- it's an unredeemed soul. On disciple so who takes pleasure in such sight. God was not creating that sight to make Joseph so important than any other person. That was not the reason. And God needed Joseph to repent of that perception. Because you are going to bless people that don't even know you. So the first set of people he blessed were Egyptians. People that would not even give him any due reason. If you do that for Egyptian, then you see your brothers in the midst of the Egyptians crying for bread. It will not be hard. Are you following me? Because you have been trained. So, uh, not that you are made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repent. For you are made sorry in a godly manner. That you might suffer loss from us in nothing. If we are going to have some profit, we may need to have some sorrow. Some, are you following me? If you don't burn the night candle, you can't be an excellent student. And if anybody tells you burning the night can do it's a very easy experience. You, you like it. It's lying. Sometimes when I remember my brother, when he was in Futa years ago, it was in the day when internet proliferation was not this much. It was in the day when we had cyber cafe. My brother would come from Akure to Ibadan to come and do night browsing. I return the next morning. We like it. Today you have it in your hand. All the libraries of the world is in your hand. You are not ready. Maybe they should ban Twitter again so that you will sorrow. The type of sorrow we will not have to regret. Because most of some of us, maybe our lives are even put in order. You know, but when I look at it, when I saw how those things worked for him later, it's not abroad. Everything is working for him. I remember. Those days he came. He was so much exposed to night reading. He had pneumonia. It was a bad one. But today, who remembers? But I mean, some people just want to lay hold on his leg and connect his grace. That's why some people, they don't even know how much sorrow I did not have to repent from. I had to go through. Then I said, Pastor, just speak the word and I connect. You will not. And I tell you the truth. You will not. I'm only going to mentor you, prepare you, but it's not going to happen like that. You will learn to stand in the midst of pain and do the right thing.
but you were made sorrow, sorrow in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Continue. Stop in verse 12. Hello, continue. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. See, are you saying that word again? Yeah, there are some things. You are the one being emotional. Anything that will lead you to repentance and realignment, is, there's no need to regret it. If God has to shut out something for your life to be in order, there's no need to regret it. If God has to shut down your job, or people, when they resign, so women have a tendency of coming to me sometimes they marry to tell me they want to resign. I used to warn them. But many a times they don't heed. Because in two weeks they change. After you resign, that's when you will know that it was a blessing that that's where you wake up to go. You know, they, say, they have destroyed me at all. They are not allowing me to think. I cannot even pray and fast. I will look at you. When you stay at home for two weeks without doing anything, you will see whether you can pray. Some of you can still pray better even when you are working. But when you are two, and the clock is just saying, okay, and you have those bad clocks. You know those bad clocks are the ones that the second ticking is so loud. Okay? It's telling you, are you alone, lawyer? Your life is smooth. Your life is smooth. <laughs> Glory to God. God is sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. You observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you? Suddenly, Joseph asked, No, I have no person to favor me anywhere. I'm in Egypt now. It is who I am that matters. It's not who gave back to me. Because at home, it was because he was the son of the old age and because of his father. That's why he had the coat of many colors. But in Egypt, the only reason why he's going to be honored is going to, is going to be dutiful. It's going to be faithful. Are you following me? It's going to, be, it's going to keep the words of his servant, of, of his master. He's not going to touch what his master did not give him. It produces in him some diligence. It produces in him some clearing of yourself, some indignation, some fear, desire, zeal, vindication. In all things, you prove yourself to be clear of this matter. It pushed you to be clear. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. Are you blessed? First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, one of the beauties of the grace of God is that your suffering is not forever. The shaking is time. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to you. For one, you are fourfold. You suffer for a while, and suffering for a while produce strength, perfect, perfection, establishment and what and settlement i was looking at the the word the, the greek word used the word suffer is, is pastoral it means to experience a sensation it is not just an imagination it's something you you felt it's a pain you felt so when he said after you have suffered for a while he was talking about something you had a connect with something that you know it because it you felt the heat suffered for a while the word while is little or few someone say little or few that's what it means so everything that you have, that sensation, that pain you are feeling, God said is for a little or a few days. He said, make you, after you have suffered a while, perfect. The word perfect 
is katizo. It means to be perfect. So he said to establish you. To establish you. It means to make stable. There are certain things you go through. You will be stable. When people say, oh, something is happening, they say, I'm not going. I have been able to define the most important things. You are made stable. Strengthen is to make strong. You will be made stable, you will be made strong. Set to, that was set to, is to have a foundation. But to have a foundation. So when the brothers of Joseph came back, you see that he was not emotional. He was not thinking, should I destroy them? Should I kill them? He always knew without any ambiguity of doubt that he was sent for preservation. He was already settled into that mind by the things that he went through. Are you following me, church? After you have suffered a little while, this is what it will do to you. It will Affect you, it will establish you, it will strengthen you, it will set to you. Who is, who is going to be set to? Who is going to have a foundation? Who is going to move from being emotional, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine? Who is going to have that stability? God said, That's why you are going through what you are going through, and that's why you must have the right attitude in it, and you must not regret going through it. Fences will come. Betrayal will come. Live in it. And do the right thing. When they cost you, bless. I say bless. I say bless. Because you are going to see it over and over and over and over and over again. Until the enemy will discover he had no meaning anymore. He has no meaning anymore. You have moved. You have been established. You have been strengthened. You have been perfected. You have been settled. A new foundation has been laid in your life. Are you following me? And it does not move you anymore. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Verse 17. For our light affliction, somebody say light affliction, which is but for a moment. Are you saying one thing consistent? Every time they talk about affliction, they show you the time frame of it is always little. The enemy keeps showing you that it's permanent. They will still be talking about it 20 years time. Nobody will remember. Yeah, good introduction. Got to break. Nobody will remember. Nobody. I will tell you, nobody. This is all you need is one child back. That way, yeah, about the joke, you But. At that moment, it will look like it's on the north. It's a, when, you, when you turn back, it is there. When you look front, it is there. When you turn around, it's like, oh God, even, even my friends have left me. How many of you remember when I tell you, it's, everybody seems to have married when you are not married. But the day you marry. And you see everybody inviting you. Actually, people are saying, oh, so you are still there. Uh, uh, really? The enemy exaggerates. God is truth. It is for a moment. Your poverty is for a moment. I say your poverty is for a moment. That good thing you have in your heart to do, it will come to your hands. 
Uh, you are not saying the email like you believe it. I said it will come into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord, the Lord will bless you. The type of blessing that you will never be able to remember the past pains will come over your life. Can you imagine that at the time in this battle, the enemy had tormented me, I cannot use car. Amy. Those days when I'm walking and I see people in their car, I think that they have a better life than me. It is now that I know that you can be driving and your car is on reserve. And everybody's looking at that and you're saying, Kodele, Kodele. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get what I'm talking about. What's your Nika? I can't even count how many cars I used in seven years. Some I used for two months, I changed it. And the enemy was telling me, you know, use car. So you imagine that one girl, when her father, when she broke from me, her father bought her a car. That was the compensation of a memo too. <laughs> it's okay. You know what I've happened to me. Thank mama. Thank God. Thank me. I didn't, I didn't lose my head. Some people say, I forget my calling. I forget my calling. This despise is too much. Which call? Every person I met, I, I am a man of God. Because the first counsel I was told when I was in part one is, don't ever marry anybody that will never embrace your call. If you think you have a calling now, and you are negotiating it, hey, I'm not a pastor. I'm actually a preacher. Yeah, you know, by the way, by the way, Lavinche, you are creating a crisis for your future. Because the day you wake up and then God has spoken to you, you say, ah, just so well. Because I've got my invitation. That's what you let I don't know why women don't want their people to serve God. Either. But our light of pleasure, which is bought for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal. Far more exceeding. You know why you are using so many adjectives to qualify one thing. It means that thing is almost indescribable. Far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory just for a light affliction. So the day is going to come back, you're going to say, oh, nobody left you because you didn't buy camera. You that will hand houses to people. Say, Pastor, I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise. Then, then you get it. Say, this house. I said, oh, you just built it. He said, no, that's your house. I said, that's your house. I'm good. So you will now look back. Now me, somebody leave because I didn't buy Ito. Ito Sander. <laughs> but all right, I'm sure for a moment, it works a greater weight of glory. Hallelujah, verse 18. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, but the things which are seen temporary. Every mother, every wife of the patriarch was barren at one point. And they have the calling to bat nations. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel. I mean, their life never reflected what the promise God called them. God was telling them, you are mother of nations. And to produce one, they didn't. There was a disparity between what God was saying and what they were experiencing. But it was for a moment. It didn't always look like a moment. How did I know? Because Sarah said that one day, when, when the moment looked like eternity, he called her husband. Uh, if it's eager, no longer malu. What matters most is that something should work. And she discovered she, she only created a temporary relief. Because when Edgar became pregnant, the woman in her came out. Not the slave. 
When that one said, bring water, he said, man, she me JJ now. He said, you know, you've never been there. <laughs> And <laughs> you know that I was saying. I said, I said, I said, I went to her husband. See what you cost. This man said, Don't be me there. Now, not be you, bring her. Do with her anything you want to do. It, moments don't look like that. It didn't look like that to Rachel. One day, Rachel held her husband. Give me a son. Or oh, else I will die. That one looked at it. Am I God? I know the Bible told you it's temporary, but the enemy is telling you it's permanent. But I want you to t- believe the report of the Lord. I, said, I want you to believe in the report of the Lord. I said it's temporary. We had a baby this week. That marriage is about six years old. Within the first few months of that marriage, they had a pregnancy. I'm in the story, and I know what happened, and it became a complication, and we waited for six years. And it was like they will not have it, but now they have it because it's temporary. I say it's temporary. God can change stories. And do you know the funny thing? Can I tell you one gist, one very funny gist about God? When God changes, it's not because we do anything different. That's the thing that pained me. It is the normal thing we've been doing. God will just say yes. And this year, God says yes to you. In Jesus' mighty name, God says yes to you. Your fountains will break open. The waters there will flow out. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, your dry season will come to an end. You will spring up with waters. You will spring up with life. I command you to be fresh, to be green, to be alive. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you believe it, speak in tongues for one hour, just for one minute, speak in tongues uh, and prophesy to yourself. Why would you not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. Shalaboko Santana Bolatale, Ramamamakura Bayata. That lack is temporary. That lack is temporary. That no job is temporary. That no companion is temporary. Imagine the what you don't look like now. Break fun. Break fun. By the spirit of the Lord. Your past days will be forgotten and buried. You will rejoice where you have went. My See a tumble. You will rejoice where you are went. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will cause your head to be lifted. The Lord will cause your joy to be full. Over your household, you will rejoice. By the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Go to Psalm 73. Let me let me begin to tie up. Let me begin to tie up. Jesus is walking in our midst. In Psalm 73, it's a long read, but I will just speak a few of this point. He said, Truly, God is good to Israel, to sort that are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. I can't make a connect with that which I know about God. I know God is good, but my own experience is painful. My steps have nearly slipped. Why? I was envious at the boastful. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, when I saw how the wicked used to have cheaply what I don't have. Years ago, a lady was crying. And why was she crying? Because she had a younger sister. And the younger sister was very wayward. And they both married. And she was very, what do you call it? Holy. Pious. And I think about five years into the marriage, the younger sister had children. She did not. She knew the stories of her younger sister. She went to one of my friends. What is God seemed unjust because sometimes the wicked prospers. They are just at ease. 
they lie and it works. You stay in truth. For many years, the brothers of Joseph had the type of life they desired. A life without the encumbrance of Joseph. They had children. They had family. They married. Joseph was in prison. Righteous for the unrighteous. There's no death in their... In, there's no punk in their death. Their strength is firm. They are not in trouble like other men. Nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. They talk. Do you know the way they talk? When you tell them, Baba, Baba, Baba give, give power to the next generation. They say, well, you know, you know power is never served. Allah cuts. Power is not free. Do you have what it takes? And you check yourself, you don't have. How many of you have 20 billion here? Dispensable 20 billion to be president. 20 billion. When I heard that they, have, they spent 13 billion to be governor of one state, I can imagine what they are spending to be president. If you really think too much on this thing, if you really, really think too much, you will be so disappointed about your bank account. Because and at best, when you look at it and it cannot change the nation, it can change your life. Eh? Where is Canada's pathway? That's why everybody is running away. Pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers their, their covers them like a garment. They have more than their heart could wish. Their eyes bored with abundance. They have more than their heart could wish. They scoff. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens. And their tongue walks to the earth. Let me rush. Go to verse 15. If I had said, if I had said I will speak thus, behold, I will be untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Continue. Surely you have set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, they are brought to desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. It's a dream when one wakes. So Lord, when you are awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved. And I was vexed in my mind. He's describing two types of pain. The first pain that was too painful for him was when he saw the prosperity of the wicked and he saw that they died fed. He said, when I thought about this, it was too painful for me. God in his wisdom invited me into his sanctuary. Come on, let me show you what you cannot see. For what you are going through today, may the Lord show you what you cannot see. Because it is, uh, it is your reference, your point of reference that determines the emotion that comes out of you. God said, but when I went into your sanctuary, I understood their end. Then I entered another pain. I was so vexed and grieved. I was so foolish and ignorant. You don't get it. He said, I believe. You know the new pain? The new pain was not what was happening. The new pain is, the first pain was about the prosperity of the wicked. The other pain was about the ignorance of the righteous. He, said, ah, yeah, yeah. he, he got ashamed. He said, God, ah, I was so foolish. I was, I was like a beast before you. So the, the, when I was shouting, you were just looking at me. Are you following me? Verse 23. Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. This is what makes us great. When we don't understand and we are shouting for no reason, God never leaves you. He says, oh, Lord, what's happening? Why are you doing this? Come to my sanctuary. Just gives you. Yeah. You know, that was what Joseph did to his brothers. When they were shouting, shouting, he just told them, please take them home for a banquet. When they got home, they just discovered that he arranged their food according to their age. Everybody was like, how did this man know? He was looking at them. You didn't come to Egypt to buy. You came into Egypt to become a nation. You 
didn't get what I'm saying. He, because they became, so by the time he opened himself to them, do you know what he told them? He said, there are still five more years to this family. He said, you have only come for two years, you are already shouting. If we, if we leave you to keep coming for the next five years, you will not have what it takes to buy. So God did not prepare for you to buy. God prepared for you to possess. You will come into Egypt and dwell in the best part of the land. Are you following me? Let me tell you the new grief of Joseph when he weeps. The new grief of Joseph when he weeps is if these people just knew. You know, there's a way you look at people say, Jesus, Jesus looked at Jerusalem and said, if he wept over that city, if you have just known, even this day, what had been prepared for your peace? He couldn't stand it. What he couldn't stand was their ignorance. What he couldn't stand was they were still trying to lie. You people have not gotten over this lie. You've not gotten over this lie. So one day they were going back. They saw their money in their sack. They came back the next night. They brought double money to entice him. They went to the man's to the steward. The steward said, "I took your money. It is God who put your money back in your bag." God does not require your money to save you. You are not saved by gold and silver. You are saved by the precious blood of the Lamb. So you will always see your money back. So when you give to God, what happens? Where do you find your money? Back in your sack. Because God does not need it. When you give God something, He gives you more. You always find what you give God back. In your sack, God said, I did what I'm doing with you by my free will, according to my own volition. You can't buy it, it is the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God. I don't know whether somebody gets that what I'm talking about. You can't buy your way out of this famine. I've sent a man ahead of you, I've sent a plan of preservation ahead of you. Are you following me? So when I went to Sachari, I was vexed, I was ignorant. Yeah, 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 yeah. May God change the type of sorrow you have from the sorrow of death. So the sorrow of transformation, I, I, you know, I, he didn't say amen very well. You don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. God has made me a father to Pharaoh. That person you fear looks at me and hearkens to my word. Things have changed. I'm not the same person you used to know. God is so gracious to you. May you know the grace of God. May God not just prepare mighty things for you that you cannot connect. Oh my God, I'm praying today that God will put a new type of body, a new type of weeping in your Joseph. What is that type of weeping? You will go outside and you have a body for people who do not understand their debts are paid. Who do not understand their sins are already forgiven. Who do not understand that the Messiah had already come. And when you look at them, there's a staring in your spirit to reveal it to them. I am Joseph. I used to be where you are, but God has brought me here to tell you you can come out from where you are to this faith that God has brought me. Are you following me? The Lord will deliver you from crying just for yourself. Because the first cry of Joseph is deliver me, don't let me go to Egypt, don't let me die in the in, 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 in the dry pit. You will not start crying for nations. Ask for me for nations. That's an inheritance. Are you following me? I saw it in Paul. After Paul's salvation was saved, Paul said, I have a great body that my people history will be saved. There are too many of us who are living from a very narrow prism of life. Because the cry of Joseph at the first time was a very narrow cry. It was a cry for himself, for his preservation, for his life. Are you following me? But the cry of the other time was not for himself, was for his brethren. God had expanded him. God had raised him a preserver of life. Are you following me? So he is able to exert himself. He's able to stay all night for certain people, for others to be blessed. He's not doing beat you just to pray for himself. So there's somebody here, God will expand you this year. You are weeping now, you will weep, but the weeping of joy. The weeping is the weeping that will expand your capacity to bless more people. In the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist said, I was foolish. Oh, I was ignorant. When they were selling me, I should be dancing. Joseph should have been giving them high five. Oh my God, I'll see you soon. I see you soon at the next level. I see you soon at another level. I see you soon at another level. But because he did not see, he was ignorant. What was he doing? He was looking at the Your life is better than me. Daddy will hug you. Because who, because who needs hug? Some of you don't need to be hugged. If hug can change your destiny, you will not be here. The, you can't even count the number of hugs you have in this life. You have it on a daily basis. The normal one and the abnormal ones. They give you every day and you are still here.
You don't need hug. You need to join workforce. You need to pray. <laughs> yeah, 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 I keep following. God, give me car. God said, no, 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 no. If I give you car, you drive past your wife. Drive past your wife. You need to walk. You need to walk. You need to walk. You need to walk. All I'm praying is that God will make all things work together for your people. I say, we'll make all things work together for you. Are you here every church? I say, God will make all things work together for you. Do you know why? Because it was forever. If you are walking now, it's for a moment. Anything you are going through that is intense, that is pain, is for a moment. It's walking a greater and a far more exceeding weight of glory. <laughs> I give God praise. So Psalm 126 verse 4 to 6 said, Those that carry precious seed and weep, they will yet come. Psalm 126 verse 4 to 6. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Those who sow in tears, those who sow in tears, will weep in joy. Weeping endures for a night. Every time God speaks about weeping, are you saying it's always short time for a night? You know why? Night is the time you have the least level of activity, which means you need not too much of involvement in the transformation of your life. You might need to live through it but you don't need too much actions to change it. He that watches over you, neither sleep nor slumber. Don't jump around trying to change it. What do you do in the night when weeping endures? You sleep. That's the problem. We wake up in the night and lose sleep. When God should be at work, you are trying to work with God. Every Adam that is going to have him must learn to sleep. So that the next time you wake up, there's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. I said it's a new beginning. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing in precious seed for sowing. Stop. I like to prophesy. Say, shall. Say, doubtless. Say, today, my doubts are out of the window. They are out of the window. It is sure that God is working for my good. It will come to pass for my good. Shout. Doubtless. Do you know what it means to be doubtless? Which means I don't entertain double mind. Leave this place without entertaining double mind. I, it, I, it's my year of purposeful promotion without entertaining double mind. Double mind. Because God will not get to the midst of the program. I, I've lost the, the plan. How, how will I get to where I'm going? Do you know why? He finished before he began. God's works were finished from the foundations of the world. The world is only ordained to begin to bring them to sight. The world can't work against it. The world is just a platform for their visibility. 2022 is a platform not to swallow you, not to afflict you, not to offend you, but to make visible the grace of God in your life. God will hear your prayers and many others will come to testify and to rejoice with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sorrow will become joy. Your sorrow will become joy. God will surprise you. God will surprise you. God will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is the God of surprise. God is the God of surprise. One of us here suddenly saw that she was pregnant years ago. She just delivered a child the year before. She was pregnant. It was a frustrating time for her. It had implication on her health, on her, on her job, on everything. And I was at home, just said, call her. I did not know. 
I said, go and pray for her. So I called her to my office. I said, what is wrong with you? He said, she just laughed. And she told me the whole story. And I said, the challenge is, I work at the type of, I, I'm still nursing a child. How do I even take care of myself? I said, the Lord will send you help. The help was COVID. A woman came into our house as they were declaring lockdown. They locked the woman there. Hey, more love. They locked the woman there till she delivered. So take care of her. She didn't feel it. It is who God has not helped that is not helped. God will help you. I said, God will help you in the name of Jesus. She was about to give birth. God called me again. Paul, he went with me. I said, God said, I should go and pray for you. I went to her house. I said, the Lord said, I should pray for you. And as I started pray, I broke forth into prophetic intercession. I said, the cord is tied. The cord is tied. The cord is tied. The cord, I, I, just, I was just saying it. I was speaking from Rahab, who tied that red scarlet. I did not know that the umbilical cord of the baby was getting detached in the mother's womb. In the mother's womb. But the cord was tied. When they opened up, they discovered it had gone out. The baby is here today. The baby is in church today. When God wants to help you, God will help you. This year, God will help you. I don't know any medical report. I don't know what anybody said. But this year, God will help you. God will send help to you from Zion. God will send help to you from Zion. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that continually go forth weeping shall come with sheaves of rejoicing. With sheaves of rejoicing. Are you blessed this morning? I'm blessed. Let me give you one more scripture. I'll pray the other ones. Pray the other ones. Second Timothy 1, 3 to 5. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did. As without season, I remember you in my prayers night and day. Continue greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears because sometimes if you don't have tears you don't have the radical power for change and something tears does it pushes you to the point where you know i have to get it from god i was mindful of your tears that i might be filled with joy the apostles know one principle that those who weep we rejoice and those who laugh we cry everybody will weep at one point or the other but make sure you weep as the preceding part to your joy are you following me so that it will be the plant foundation and the platform to prepare you but as anybody will know you are wasting your time but joseph god made sure he wept at the right time you know who his brothers were weeping at the wrong time Type of weeping that was making them creative with a life. You know, his, his father is dead now. At that time, Joseph was not weeping anymore. Greatly desiring to see your tears. I need to come sometime and see that you really, 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 you have taken something serious. They are not important to you. They are your prayer point. So I can go home refreshed. Because you see, every Hannah does not get a child by fighting pen and I. They don't get a child. By getting double portion of food. That's what the husband, the husband of Anna never wanted her to have tears. He wanted that. So every time they are giving give her double portion. One day she was crying, she said, Am I not better to you than ten sons? Everything that was giving her a better life, but that did not make her to embrace God's process for her was cutting short her opportunity. So one day she went and bought her soul. Say, I'm happy when you pour your soul, especially to God, not to gossip, not to people that cannot help you. When you know the right direction to pour your soul, then you have found a platform for your change. She went to God when everybody had eaten, when everybody she left everybody aside, and she was talking only in her heart, pouring her soul. She was making a transaction. Suddenly, she found the need of heaven because Shiloh at that time had become corrupted. Eli's sons were already sleeping with women at the top of the God was looking for a faithful priest. And she told God, if you give me this child, I give you some. God said, we are now on the same page. And for you to know 
It was not that she had problem. How did I know? Because after she gave Samuel to God, God gave her five boys. No fertility treatment. God. The question, but God made needed her to push her to a point where she can first make the first food for God. I said, this is your one. Because this, this, this is what I've been trying to tell you. But you are just too excited. Some of us are just too excited. That's why we, we, don't, we never get the message. So sometimes God needs to shut down some of the excitement. And we never regret. God, are you not saying that? I'm seen. Being mindful of your tears that I might be filled with joy. Why? That's fine. That's fine. When I call to the rem the, to remembrance the genuine faith which is in you, we dwelt in your grandmother Louis and your mother Eunice. I am persuaded it's in yours. What was the what was the joy Paul had? Paul knew that something was flowing in that generation. And until the tears of Timothy came, he couldn't connect with it. He would have disconnected from what had been happening in his generation. You no, know, sometimes we want to have another way. He said, I don't want to do what my father did. I don't want to do what my mother did. And you just want to find your own way. But finding your own way, you disconnect from your own path. So until God connected him back, it was, it was a painful experience, but it was a needful experience. Paul said, That is something that has been flowing from your grandmother. That's in your mother, which is in you. So look at him. I remind you. Why is he reminding him? It means Timothy at that time had put the gift of God aside. And the day God had to make him face it, he didn't face it and he didn't embrace it with all joy at first. Are you following me? Because he wanted a different path from his grandmother, a different path from his mother. But God said, that's the path I want from you. And he embraced with joy. And went with, with tears. And when Paul saw it, Paul said, I rejoice. I rejoice. God's plan is working. I rejoice. God's plan is working. Some people that say, I have nothing to do with church anymore. I hear the word of the Lord tell you, you will even marry pastors. Not again, not again, not again, not again. Not again. You are reconnected to the path. You have been dedicated to the course of destiny. Remind you, stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir up the gift of God which is in you. It's been put in you by the laying on of hands. You might have forgotten it, but it is there. It's there. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I can't finish this. Up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when Jesus wept in Lazarus' house, it was not the cry of lack of capacity. The cry of Joseph at first was the cry of inadequacy. He couldn't deliver himself. All his brothers were bigger than him, stronger than him. They could push him to where he didn't want to go. That was his cry. But when he was crying the latter days, his cry was, I wish you understand what God had prepared for you. When Jesus, you see Jesus cry, Jesus never cries for incapacity. It is amazing that the chapter that has Jesus wept, a few verses after has Jesus raised a man from dead four days after. And so when Jesus wept in John 11, Jesus looked at God. He said, Father, I thank you. You always hear me. I'm only saying this because of these people. So why was he weeping? He was not weeping for himself. He was weeping for the ability not to connect with what God. He looked at them. They said, resurrection. Our brother is going to live at resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. When he said, roll away the stone, Martha said, but it's already this thing. He said, didn't I tell you? Do you know why Joseph was weeping? They couldn't connect with what he was telling them. Every time the brothers of Joseph came back and tell him, oh, you know what, just forget what we did, he weeps. I have shifted though. Joseph tears have a new identity. It's not about Sophia. It's not about lack anymore. It's not about lack anymore. It's so that it's, I just wish you understand the love of God for you. I just wish you understand 
the, the, how God cares for you and how God has raised the man for you. And that's what I just wish. I just wish you understand. So you drop all this corny attitude. You drop all this, all this lies. You drop, so if you really know God has gone ahead of you, stop forcing your way into things God has not opened for you. That was what he was showing them. His cries and tears have taken up a new form. They used to be cries of sorrow. They are cries of joy. I want to send you out of this meeting today with a new cry. I know you've cried to be delivered. And you'll be hard. I know you've cried to be saved. You'll be hard. But I want to send you out with a new cry. A cry that will look outside. And wish everybody have what you have. I wish everybody see what you see. The cry that will make you go out and tell people, you know what, I go through worse than what you are going through. But I'm not as troubled as you are. I wish you see the one who is with me. The Lord is mighty in the midst of his people. There's, there, there's too much of ignorance in our land. And it should become our body. Present you new tears of Joseph. It's not the tears of sustainers anymore. I don't have time to show you how many times he wept. Stand to your feet, let's pray some prayers. Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Romans 9, verse 1 to 5. I tell you the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. Paul said, My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself uh, were a cause for from Christ. For my brethren. This man's cry. Was about what? It was not about himself. My countrymen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites. To whom pertain the adoption. The glory. The covenant. The giving of the Lord. The service of God. The promises. Of whom are the fathers. And from whom according to flesh. Christ came. Who is over us. Over all. Eternally blessed. God, amen. Paul said, I wish I have continual grief. What, why, why, why do you have grief, Paul? What's your need? I have no need. I just wish people see what I have said. I just wish the church can capture the vision. That's my own body now. It's not, it's not the former bodies I used to have anymore. Go to Romans chapter 10 again. Verse 1. To 4. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone who believes. Who is Joseph? Joseph is the one who recognizes his brothers when they don't know him. And what does that mean? You go to the world, you know what they need, but they don't see you as who they need. You have so much of love to bring the blessings of God for them. But they have so much of hatred to think that you are a server of death unto death for them. That gap was Joseph's body. That should be the body of the church. That church that is eternally blessed, carrying the life of God. Living in the midst of an ignorant world. 
that you know what they are going through but they don't know the hope and the comfort you have and you want to have fellowship with them so that the comfort you have is the comfort they have you are not are you getting this and when they have that that's when we become brothers again because until that time we are strangers to one another may you go out today with a fresh body for others to see what God has shown you. I thought you would say a better amen. Apostle Paul used to have some very straight bodies. Philippians 3 verse 17 to 24. Philippians 3 17 to 24. Brethren, join in following my example and know those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I've told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of God. Paul, why are you weeping? I'm weeping that there are too many people walking, serving their belly. Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? Whose glory is their shame? Who set their mind on earthly things? For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, there is something I see. I'm heavenly. There are too many people that are at me. I serve the living God. Many people serve their bellies. And when I see that gap, disparity, I just weep. I don't know whether I can plant this burden in you by the Spirit of God. Let somebody enjoy what God has shown you to this year. Let somebody come to the assurance of salvation. Let somebody's name be written in the book of life. Yours is there. Is it a burden enough for you? Why should I be on this side in strength and power? Why my brethren are on the other side in weakness and suffering? Why should, be on this side? Why should I be on this side with power over devils? And my brethren are on this side tormented by devils they can't sleep they are running away they are having bad dreams i sleep in the night i wake up in the morning sometimes i, I even i don't even remember to thank god it's become too normal to live in victory so it's become my body i want many to experience it i want many to experience it so today in the name of jesus i want you to lift your hands and thank god that he sees all your tears the psalmist said, all my tears are gathered in his bottle. He sees them. He sees them. And sometimes he doesn't answer, not because he's angry, but because he knows he's working for your good. He's working for your good. It's working for your good. One day you are going to look at it. Oh, there was really no need to cry at that point. There was really no need. There was really no need to cry at that point. There was really no need. I have a He will me. No matter where I go. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he gets me well. Oh, yes. 
this morning take me into your sanctuary where my perception is changed of everything that is happening around me take me to the place where the secrets of god are made bear upon my tabernacle let me know what i do not know take me into your sanctuary take me to your inner recess let me see what i have not considered before let me see the things I've ignored. Oh, so that I will realize finally that there was no need to cry. Never was there a need to cry. Never. When you go to sanctuary, wipe away your tears because it changes your perspective. <laughs> Joseph, you are not sold, you are sent. You are not sold, you are sent. You are not a slave, you are a lord. Oh my God. He knows my name. He sees every tear. Everybody that is using his pillow to cover your tears. I come to you this morning. In the name of Jesus, your joy has come. Crying out of loneliness, crying out of de despair, Malakotina, your time of rejoicing has come in Jesus' name. things Luke 19 verse 41 to 44 I want to break forth into intercession for one minute Luke 19 verse 41 now as he drew near that's Jesus he saw the city and wept over it every time Jesus weeps he never weeps from incapacity he always weeps for ignorance an high priest and why was he weeping he said if you have known even you especially in this your day the things that make for your peace but now they are hidden from your eyes say father lord tear the veil that cover the nations tear the veil that cover our eyes and the eyes of people all around that is not making them to see the glory of god Lift your if the gospel be hid is hidden to them. Would the God of this world have blinded their eyes? Let that blindness go out. Let that blindness go out. You know, even in this environment, there is somebody that needed this message this morning that is locked up somewhere in his house because of blindness, because of blindness, because of covering. I want you to say, why did Jesus weep? We have changed the reason why we are weeping. We are not weeping just because of incapacity. We are weeping that the ignorant will come. 
come into knowledge. We are weeping that the sick will come into healing. Lord, hear our voice. Let the world know that the church truly is the house of prayer for all nations. And is the seed of salvation. It's the door of salvation and pasture for all nations. Let your people come and find salvation. Somebody pray. Raise that voice of intercession. Raise that voice of intercession. The Bible said Joseph could not restrain himself anymore. I can't allow this show to continue. I can't allow my brother to continue in sin. I can't allow my sister to continue falling. I can't allow my friends. I can't stand my father being an enemy of God until now. I can't restrain myself anymore. I want that veil to be torn now. I want that veil to be torn now. Hear my voice. I can't restrain myself anymore. I can't restrain myself anymore. No, 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 no. These tears are for some people to come. This church is for some people to find discipleship. I can't restrain myself anymore. I can't hold back anymore. Tear the veil. It's your glory day. Rain the veil. It's your glory day. I can't restrain myself anymore. What are the things for my peace that are hidden from my eyes? See the veil. Let my eyes see them. Let my eyes see them. Let my eyes see them. In the name of Jesus Christ. This moment must not be prepared for me somewhere when I'm living in turmoil in another place. This must not be prepared for me somewhere when I'm living in turmoil in another place. Rain the veil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rain the veil. Ramaka Satodia. Rain the veil. Lead me to where you're prepared for me. Go ahead of your church to see. Lord, we must not be found in the wrong place at the wrong time. Rain the veil in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Before I finally drop the line, Joseph, Lord, his brothers slay him. And they're his brothers. Hey, I need to tell you something, church. Not everybody fear devils. Some people have seen the victory of the blood. Can I tell you the truth today? Not everybody lives in sin. Some people have been delivered from the power of sin. Are you following me? Can I tell you the truth? Not everybody is afraid of Jesus coming today. Some people love his appearing. And I'm giving you the opportunity to break out of that fear and come into this confidence. If you are not born again in church this morning, or anywhere where you are listening to us, it's your moment. We cannot allow our brothers to continue in slavery where we continue in lordship. No! Let's come into the same fellowship. Let's come into the same fellowship. If you, are, if you want to give your life to Christ, I want to come into the assurance of salvation and the confidence of being sons of God. It's your moment. It's your moment. If you have anybody here like that this morning, you can raise your hand above your head and let's just pray together. You need to go out of this place with the assurance of the Lord. You need your sins to be forgiven. You need to know that you don't need to carry the guilt of sin anymore. You need to rededicate yourself to Jesus. It's your moment. It's your moment. It's your moment. If you have, you have anybody like that here, yeah, raise your hand above your head. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Because it's your day of joy. 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 Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what wrong step you took. What wrong thing you did. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. It's your day. It's your day of joy. It's your day of joy. If you ask anybody like that, just let's pray in one minute. Want with another. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surrender the Surrender the